As you're about to see, Martha Teichner just hated this assignment. This is the most accurate reconstruction of Tyrannosaurus rex ever made. Some of the things I think are new, noticeably, the big one is this stuff up here. Can I touch it? Yeah. It's the, the feathers. Feathers? Yes, news flash. The king of the dinosaurs probably did look like it was wearing a bad toupee. And the eyes, one of the things that people don't understand is that just how good these eyes were. Not only did these guys see in color, they see in more colors than we do. Mark Norell is head paleontologist at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Hard to believe that this thing would grow up to be 40 feet long and weigh tons and tons and tons. It looks sort of like a roadrunner bird. <laughs> well, they are very closely related to birds. Kind of cute until they hit their growth spurt. They grew really, really quickly between about the ages of six years old and 18 years old around six pounds a day during that time period. Six pounds yeah. a day? Yeah, yeah. And consider their teeth. The teeth are continually replaced through life, so those are new ones coming in. Just the overall bite force is around 8,000 pounds, which is tremendous. But if the force on any, the tip of any single tooth is nearly half a million pounds. Yikes. Are you scared yet? What do paleontologists call a pack of T-Rexes? A terror of tyrannosaurs. I didn't make that up. The deadliest land predator ever to live is having a moment. Not only did the American Museum of Natural History launch its huge new exhibition this spring, the National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. has reopened its fossil hall around what it's billed as the nation's T-Rex, here devouring a triceratops. It's also the subject of commemorative stamps issued in August. In fact, T-Rex is America's dinosaur. Every one of the 60 or so specimens found so far has come from the Western United States or from Canada. Most of them have nicknames. There's Sue in Chicago, Scotty in Saskatchewan, Bucky in Indianapolis, among others. Well, Barnum Brown is probably the world's greatest dinosaur hunter. He was quite a character as well. Named after P.T. Barnum, in 1902, Barnum Brown found the first fossil skeleton recognized as a T-Rex in Montana. In 1908, he found another, even better one. He used to dress in, sometimes in a tie and a beaver skin coat in the field. He was a notorious womanizer. He worked as an intelligence officer under the guise of being a paleontologist. Tyrannosaurus rex caused a sensation. Since the American Museum of Natural History put one of Brown's discoveries on display in 1915, <laughs> dinomania has only increased. Nearly 300 million Americans bought tickets to the five Jurassic movies. How many more watched them on DVD or television? For fans who can't wait till the next one comes out in 2021, there's the Jurassic World Live Tour. Coming to a city near you with life-size dino puppets. That's incredible. And animatronics that operate like super sophisticated, very large, radio-controlled cars. The show, like the films, plays on every kid's fantasy of meeting a dinosaur face to face, or at least digging one up. We thought, what could be cooler than that? So off we went to the badlands of Montana, T-Rex country with a team from the University of Kansas, led by paleontologist David Burnham, who brings his dog Buford on digs. 65, 70 million years ago, this was subtropical forest land, bordering a giant inland ocean. What we're standing on is the last place dinosaurs can be found on this planet. They went extinct because a space rock crashed into the Earth in the Gulf of Mexico, 
the famous asteroid. So how do you even know where to look? What one has to do is learn how to read the rocks. So you have that tan color sitting right on top of that gray mudstone there. And that interface, for some reason, tends to have more dinosaurs than any other interface. One of Burnham's students found a T-Rex here already in 2016. A juvenile, maybe 11 years old, the team named Laurel. 15 to 20 percent complete pieces of Laurel are now in David Burnham's lab at the University of Kansas right. in Lawrence. This is the jaw that uh, got everybody excited. How big a find was Laurel? Incredibly huge. I mean, it's, you don't find juvenile T-Rex every day. We have currently the most complete baby Tyrannosaur found. KU student Jordan Van Sickler found Laurel's upper jaw in the summer of 2017. Oh, boy. This was the moment. Yeah, that's it. Woo -wee. It just keeps giving and giving, and we just keep coming back. It's unbelievably hard work, scraping away hour after hour in what's called the bone zone. It's tedious with a capital T until somebody finds something. Found. Look at that. Look at it. Isn't that fantastic? Wow. Bingo. Less than an hour after we arrived on our first day, KU student Lauren Gertschy started turning up teeth. There you go. Oh, it's rooted. Oh, we got a full wow. root. Wow. Then volunteer Wes Benson found a tooth. That particular tooth is literally the best find of my life. It hasn't seen the sunlight for 65, 66 million years. So Each discovery was recorded in David Burnham's field book. I want to see your shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had, I got this in uh, high school. Volunteer Sarah Naval has been dreaming dinosaur dreams ever since. It's like looking for gold or treasure, but this is a breathing, humongous predator that was alive which is why on our second day at the site, it was so exciting when I found a T-Rex tooth. Me. Congratulations. Wow, that's yeah. Yay. Nice. <laughs> Looky what I found. <laughs> Turns out the tooth belonged to another T-Rex, even younger than Laurel. Tally after four days of digging, 13 teeth and a bone. Not bad. So, what else is in that hill that's been keeping T-Rex's secrets for 66 million years?